You've got a great design sketched out, but it's on crappy paper. How do you get it onto good paper so you can ink it or paint it or color it? Today I'll show you just how easy it is to transfer your design onto good paper so you can do all those things. Coming right up. Hello everyone, I'm Carrie Buziak of Aeon Celtic Art. I'm a best-selling published author as well as a Celtic artist teaching modern techniques and ancient art. I've been teaching these techniques for the last 25 years from my website as well as in my book Creating Celtic Knotwork by Dover Publications. Before we get started today, make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring that bell so you're kept up to date on all new tutorials. Now that we've got the groundwork laid with the knotting tutorials, I'm going to show you today how to transfer your design onto good paper. So if you've been working on the dot paper or sketch paper, this will show you how you can transfer your design onto good paper so you can ink it or paint it or color it. I'm going to go over the tools for that today as well as do a little demo so you can see how it's done. I do have a little something to share with you guys today at the end of the video, so make sure you hang around to the end so you can check that out. So let's talk a little bit about the theory of what we'll be doing. Those who are old like me, uh, you probably remember carbon paper. So when you would pay by credit card, they would use that carbon paper in between and it would transfer what you wrote from the top to the bottom. And the technique that I'm going to show you today is much the same as that. Only don't use real carbon paper because it'll smudge all over the place and it'll make a mess. So what we're going to use is called transfer paper or graphite paper. Same kind of principle except it's graphite so it's a little more easy to erase it if you do make a mistake and it's going to be less messy. So what we're going to be doing is creating a sandwich essentially. So you'll have your original sketch, so your rough copy. Under that you'll have your transfer paper with the graphite side facing down and then the bottom layer is going to be your good paper. So we're going to trace over that top layer and it's going to transfer down onto your good paper below. And that's the easiest way to transfer your rough designs onto some good paper. Now there's better and worse versions of this paper. I've tried a few different brands. I personally like the Sorel brand. I find it gives a nice compromise between not being very smudgy and messy, but also transferring really easily and being just a little bit on the erasable side. So if while I'm tracing I overdraw a line, I'm still able to kind of work at it with a white vinyl eraser and lift it off the paper if I haven't pressed too hard. Sorel also comes in different colors. So if I'm working on a dark paper, like a dark pastel paper, and I'm going to be doing some colored pencil work on it, I can use the white Sorel paper and I can trace down on that and it'll leave a white design on my paper. So a little more easy to see as opposed to the graphite, which is kind of like a silvery black color. So I have a sheet of it here. I'll show you what it looks like. So basically you have, this is the graphite side. So this is the side that will transfer down your design. And then the back side is just white. So when you're tracing this onto your good paper, you're going to have your sketch, and then this paper will face this way so it transfers down onto your good paper below it. Now if you need a bigger sheet, you can also tape these pages together. You just want to make sure that you're putting your tape on the back side of it, not the transfer side. Because if the tape is on the transfer side when you're doing your tracing, when it hits that bit of tape, it's not going to be able to get the graphite through and it won't transfer it down. And you'll have like a little rectangular patch. I totally have never done that. Totally. So to do the actual transferring, I like to use a medium ballpoint pen. You can sort of see the blue line as you trace over your sketch line, so it's a little easier to see where you've gone and what you have left to do. And as well, I find the medium tip is just a little bit softer. So if I'm pressing and it turns out I'm pressing just a little too hard, the medium tip isn't going to emboss my paper as hard as like a really fine pointy tip would. And talking about pressure, you want to add just enough pressure that it transfers, but not so much pressure that you're embossing or grooving a line in your good paper. So sometimes finding that little medium balance in between the two can take a little testing. And I'll show you how to do that in the demo portion. Uh, what I like to do just to make sure that I'm not pressing too hard as I'm going. Lastly, I like to use a low tack tape. So when you make your sandwich and you've got everything aligned and you put it on your work surface, so your drafting table or your art table, I like to tape it to the table just to make sure it's not shifting so I'm not accidentally misaligning things when I'm doing the transfer process. So I find a low tack tape works really well for this. So you can use like a painter's tape, that's the green tape or the blue tape, something that has low tack so you'll be able to peel it off again after without damaging your good paper. Or you 
can also get like a scotch tape, which is a low tack as well. If all you have is regular tape at home, you can just take off a little strip. If you stick it to your blue jeans a couple of times, then it removes a little bit of the tack and you can use it on your paper and still peel it off after. Now, when you're doing your transferring, I recommend doing it all in one sitting if possible. Maximum two days, and here's why. Even though you've got a low tack tape, it's still gonna leave a tiny little bit of residue. And the longer you leave it on, the more residue is left on your paper. And this is difficult, especially if you're doing gilding. So that's the gold leafing. If you're using an imitation leaf, a fake gold leaf or a fake silver, it's not so bad. But if you're working with pure gold leaf, that stuff sticks to everything. So after a gilding session, like you'll have it on your nose and your face and all over the place. And if you have even that little bit of stick left on the paper and you're doing real gold leaf, it's gonna leave these rectangular patches of gold on your page. And trust me, that's no fun. You can kind of erase it away, but uh, it's just a little more hassle than you need to deal with. So just try and do all your tracing in as few sessions as possible, and you'll be able to take it off without leaving a whole bunch of tape residue on there. Okay, that's it for the discussion part. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do the demo now for you so you can see how this all comes together. I'm just gonna do a little design. You guys don't need to see me labor away over something huge for this. I just wanna do something that you can see the discussion part in action right here. Okay, so here's my setup. For the purposes of this demonstration, this is gonna be my good paper. We're just gonna use our imaginations that it is like a fancy watercolor paper or something. This is my painter's tape, so I'm gonna just do a couple little bits here. I'm just gonna tape this to my table just to make sure it doesn't shift while I'm doing this whole process. There we go. All right, this is my transfer paper, also sometimes called graphite paper. This is the graphite side, and then this is the back of it. And this is my little design that I'll be tracing down. So, make my sandwich. I have my good paper with the side I want face up. I put my transfer paper down. Again, transfer side is face down. And then I put my good art on top. Now, normally I would have like measured off to position it exactly in the middle of my fancy paper, but um, we're just gonna stick it on there as it is this time. I'm gonna use my low tack tape again. And I'm gonna fasten my sketch down to the good paper. So this way while I'm working, I'm not gonna shift it around or accidentally misalign it while I'm doing my tracing. I'm gonna take my medium ballpoint pen and I'm gonna to begin to trace. And this is super easy, just take your time. You've already done the work to make the lines. At this point, all you have to do is just follow what you've already done before. I'm giving it medium kind of pressure, not super light, but also not super hard. And once I've got my first couple lines done, I'm just gonna hold it all in place and lift one side of it. Now this is important, especially if you're doing a huge piece. Oh my God, I can't tell you how many times I've done like three quarters of the whole thing and then I realized I wasn't pressing hard enough. Oh, it makes you lose your mind. Okay, so peel it back here and you see it hasn't really transferred down very well at all. So I need to push a little bit harder. So it's still all aligned because I kept it taped. So I'm just gonna refasten it down and do a retrace over those lines. Gonna press just a touch harder this time so it transfers a little more easily. There we go. And now that I've done it, I've tested a heavier pressure and I'm just gonna make sure again that that is working. I peel it back, aha. So hopefully you can see that in the video. Now I do have lines that I can follow. And keep in mind, like these don't have to be super, super dark. It's just to give you a guideline so when you do your inking or coloring after you have something to follow. So again, I'm gonna keep it all aligned, fold it back down, refasten it. I'm gonna continue outlining the rest of it here. Keeping that pressure that I figured works really well. Alrighty, now when you get to the end, you also wanna do a check. Before you misalign everything by removing it all, 
just do one last check and make sure you got all the lines. If you're working on a really big piece and say you missed copying down like a little hunk in the corner, it is super hard to get everything realigned to fill in that tiny patch you missed. So before you disassemble it all, just do one last check. Again, don't let it shift. And I can look at it and go like, okay, yeah, I can see that, that's fine. I am safe to remove the rest. And there we go. My design is transferred down onto my fancy photocopier paper, but we'll pretend it's really pretty watercolor paper. And there you go, trace down. Same process, just keep going bigger if you're working on a bigger piece. Again, the transfer paper can be patched together. So I like to have a few small chunks kicking around. So when I do little pieces, I'm not having to lay out a huge sheet. It is reusable, so save your little scraps. I put mine in an envelope and then you can just sort of paw through it when you go to do another piece and just find something that fits uh, the size that you wanna do. And if you do need something bigger, like I say, you can patch them together. Now, if this was regular scotch tape, Pretend with me again, using our imaginations. If you do wanna join pieces together, make sure that you're attaching the tape to the back side of it, not on the graphite side. Because if you're doing it the other way and you have this under here, when you're doing your tracing, the transfer is not gonna work where you've got that tape piece. So if you are splicing pieces together, make sure you're doing the taping from the back side of it. So that's the basic how-to on that. I know there's a lot of little points and a lot of little tips to remember. So what I've made this week for your worksheet is just a summary of everything I've discussed and the things I showed you in the video, just so you have something tangible that you can refer back to later. Or of course you can come and watch the video again if that's your jam. Now the neat thing that I wanna share with you guys. So as you guys know, I have a Patreon page and I have Patreon supporters there. And what I like to do each year for them is a little commemorative coin. So in our first year for 2019, I did a little Celtic horse. Oh, there it is there, that little guy. So that's what we did for 2019. And now the 2020 coins are finished and they are a little dragon design. Let me see, there we go. So it's a little dragon design. Next year we'll do a new design again and anyone who is a member for the year of 2021, you will receive one of those coins. So just kind of a fun little commemorative thing and this is pretty much the only place you can get them. So if you do like them, please consider signing up as a member. That's it for this week, guys. Remember before we go, subscribe to my channel and ring that bell so you're kept up to date on all new tutorials. Bye.